scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible is full of near, near shame experiences where God got up, showed up for individuals, showed up for the nation of Israel. God turned the lives of people around overnight. Let me show you one scripture you will want to know. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Learn this scripture, add it to your spiritual arsenals. You will need it, I guarantee you. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I want us to run uh, tonight. Read it with me, please. One, two, read. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly from temptation or oppression or calamities and to reserve the unjust unto the day. The Lord knows how to exchange experiences that he looks as child and says for my name's sake, come promise. That he looks at this person who calls upon his name and watches that this guy is getting into trouble. He says God knows how to exchange people and carry this person out and drop the wicked for the punishment that is allocated for the righteous is called intervention. There is a system in God. Listen, please. There is a system in God where God can plug men out of the fire. Remember the story of the three Hebrew boys. The Bible says they found the furnace seven times that those who threw them inside the furnace listen they threw them inside the furnace and the heat killed them and when four of them were inside the king was not a believer but the king had had strange encounters and he saw a face in that fire he had seen in his dream he said i i look and i see four people and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of god and the bible says they came out they could not even smell fire what of daniel that was thrown in the den of the lions because of his prayer life the bible says the lions were at peace with him and when he came out and they threw those other fellows the lions just devoured them brothers and sisters there is a mystery there is a hidden code of operation allocated to the saints in light to help them deliver them out of all the troubles and the vicissitudes that Satan puts. Because you see, your destiny is a function of many things. And sadly, it includes the lives of others. And that also includes their carelessness. There are times you will get into things you necessarily did not cause. But you will suffer the consequence if you don't know how to exempt yourself. This is like an extension of the mystery of exemption. The mystery of divine intervention. Where men called upon God and God showed up and turned the lives of nations around. Turned the lives of individuals around. There is a way you call upon God for your personal prayer life. But brothers and sisters, there is a way you call upon God to intervene on a matter. That if he does not intervene, sometimes it may be that you are finished. There was a time death was killing people in Israel. Killing people. There was a way they called on God. Divine intervention is real. All through scripture we see that God is able to arise. Psalms 102 verse 13. It says thou shall arise 
and have mercy upon Zion for the time in God's calendar there is a time oh, there is a time to favor Joshua Selman there is a time to lift me and you see the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 9 that God does not do anything but to reveal his secret to his servants the prophets so when God is about to do something in a territory he captures his thoughts in words in in similitudes in in all kinds of expressions communicates it to his servants to deliver to the people so that their faith will be connected to what he wants to do in the season and God has declared that it's a season of triumph I believe God it's not just a cliche that a man of God comes to move ministry forward no sir thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time the time to favor her the time to lift her the time to honor her for God's sake the time to wipe her tears the time for Zion to say I am also the bride of a good man he says the time has come thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come many people want intervention intervention is the supernatural is a supernatural visitation over a man's situation that brings a radical transformation supernatural visitation of God supernatural visitation of God all of a sudden God steps in overnight and changes a man's situation overnight he says have you heard this proverb that a city was born in one day he said but as soon as Zion travails in one day she shall put forth a son why do we need divine intervention because of our imperfection as human beings the first reason that necessitates divine intervention is that we are inaccurate as human beings our inaccuracy as human beings inaccuracy of understanding and obeying the precepts of god will necessitate god to create that provision Are we together? If a young man drinks and smokes and gets to a point where he now repents when his liver is quarter to die. He has repented but the liver is still going to kill him. That gentleman doesn't just need a healing. He needs a divine intervention. When somebody repents in the prison and is supposed to say 80 years and he went there at 40. You see that he's going to die in the prison? He needs divine intervention. He's born again, but he's in the prison. Our families are in desperate need for divine intervention. Is that true? Hmm. Father not working, mother not working, 13 children, 10 of them not working. All of them graduates. Haba. There is need for a strange intervention. How about human agents that will sit on your destiny and vow and say for as long as we are here, we fraternize with darkness to jeopardize your confidence about God. I wish there was no such reality. But brothers and sisters, the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the wickedness that lies in our world. I was talking with a young man on phone who sent me a text I think they worship one kind of idol and the father has been calling him I should come back there's something he's supposed to do the guy said he's not coming back after graduating from school they are asking you to come they will bath you put something on your head like a cap and one kind of ritual like this after that they will say you can go the guy said he's not coming and the man told him that that thing whatever it is will pursue him and look for him his blood father the boy was speaking to me and i said let me tell you my brother if you go there and carry yourself and go and sit down under that whatever it is and they bath you with the blood of an animal and do those rituals uh -uh, god is able rather than wasting your time paying transport use the money and buy a book that reveals a mystery that you 
you keep the enemy at bay because what that shrine is trying to prevent him from will look for him if he doesn't have the mystery allocated he can make bold face and say i won't go but you will soon find out that it will happen to him first child dull second child very dull that child very dull and the person said i'm brilliant my wife is brilliant and he sees that thing in a dream he say i i told you 10 years ago you would have rescued your children see don't reject darkness without having the light component don't just say i reject darkness eh, every shine in my village god forbid it's a joke you must have the light component otherwise i tell you to haunt you and tear you into pieces there are forces of darkness we need divine intervention because of our inaccuracy we need divine intervention because listen the pace at which darkness attempts to destroy us versus our level of spiritual growth will require divine intervention at some point now look at me listen let me tell you something in the next 10 years there are things that i will know then that i don't know now but satan is plotting all kinds of schemes over my life based on the knowledge i need to know 10 years to come i need intervention by the mercy of god to give me victory before i enter that level of understanding if my victory is purely left to my level of understanding alone it means that i will be punished on many grounds before i come into that knowledge you need divine intervention is god speaking to someone here let me tell you this i am very outspoken about results i'm not a man of god that will lie to you and say results don't matter it's a lie it's a lie if results don't matter why do you go to work why do you wait for salary at the end of the month is that true results matter to god matter to the devil matters to everybody on earth whether we agree or not results are consolations to your christian experience whilst it is true that we do not serve god just for results but brothers and sisters let me tell you even jesus saw a fig tree that was receiving nourishment from the principle he programmed in the earth and was not yielding the result he caused it in annoyance so god wants us to bear fruit but there are keys that we must understand please look up there are many of us here and there are many of our family members here had they known that there is a mystery that controls divine intervention many tragedies we now weep over would not have happened listen carefully are we together now yes somebody looked at you and vowed and said pastor alpha i will destroy you we said no problem you wouldn't destroy me but you did not understand the component the revelation component and eventually it caught up with you i pray for a lady she probably may be following now online married loved her husband all of a sudden the husband just changed and became a, a very very funny man doesn't even stay in the same room with her and all of that and she, she could not take it again and she called me you know i prayed with that lady and just this morning she sent me a text she said she woke up in the morning and just saw her husband sitting by her bed something brought him listen listen this is what I, you see men are slaves to the mysteries that control them you can program things like a bomb in the spirit and just go and watch it the same way i can put a bomb and i program blow by eight o'clock and then i just move somewhere and i'm laughing at everybody around here because it must blow except another agency superimposes it this is how you can program results in the realm of the spirit and watch like a movie as they unfold in the earth realm using things you call circumstances coincidences but you know that they are intentional results that were programmed by mysteries this is how i want your life to be that you can sit down and program growth program speed program breakthrough and watch everything like a movie and day after day you watch someone get up and say sorry elijah i i, I hope this is a new keyboard i bought for you and you laugh something was programmed 
your house that has been 10 years refused to be completed you program something by understanding and someone comes to say ah, sam i don't know do you mind me complete this house and you will say yes because it was intentionally done you don't say i'm surprised you are coming i'm not surprised you were called that, are we together that's why when people die in the villages the harbalists don't cry have you ever seen them crying no something they programmed they program somebody from London and tell him where to come and die. When he dies, other people are crying at the guy says, well, it's just to let you know that we are not children. You can program things. From the foundations of the earth, some things were programmed. And the intelligence of the father, he watched everything unfold through redemption. No power could stop it. Satan tried. He entered. He went when Jesus was fasting. Now came and entered Peter. Now came and entered. When he entered Judas, I'm sure Satan thought he was smart. Paul was watching it like a movie and saying, yeah, yeah, had they known this? So this was the caricature that God was making out of Satan. He thought he was smart, but he was, God was using him as a slave. Because you see, when you kill a man, according to scripture, his blood will haunt you. So God made sure it was Satan that killed Jesus. Go and read your Bible. Blood is a mystery. It remains on the head of the killer forever. Paul was watching this. Whether he was in a hole, in a cave, in prison, I don't know. But Paul was saying, ah, ah. Satan, couldn't you see? Jesus casted you out of Peter and left you in Judas. You didn't ask why. You just continued until you became a fool. That's the reason why when we invoke the blood, something really happens. It happens to whoever was the killer. When Cain killed Abel, blood cried against him. Cried against him. <laughs> I need divine intervention. You need divine intervention. Samaria needed divine intervention. Please sit down. They got to a point. Scripture says, come. That they got to a point where women... Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, that you get to a point where you are not just eating goats, you are not just eating clothes. Women, you have your child. I'm telling you, there is a strange grace this year for fruitfulness and miracles in this ministry. We have seen very dramatic manifestations and, and all of that. There are mothers all around with their children moving right and center. Now, imagine... Pastor Alphas, that little baby. Imagine Annie holding this her child and saying, look, there is so much poverty. Pastor Alpha travels somewhere to go and look for food. And she liasses with a Jimmy's wife. Two of them, they carry Jael and carry David. And two of them stand and agree. And they say, we are eating Jael this night. You eat it. What sort of hunger makes you eat a whole human being? Now watch this. Then the Bible says they ate the first one. Then the next day, it was the turn to eat the other one. And the mother said no. And the woman said no. You ate my child. Listen, while that confusion was happening, the king started passing. And they went. They said, king, you can't leave us like this. And when all of that happened, the king said, look for Elisha for me. Look for Elisha for me because he had that Elijah program farming. He said, I'm sure Elisha has a hand in this trouble. Go and look for this. This, this guy was mentored by the troublemaker of Israel. Go and look for Elisha. Watch this. While all of this suffering was happening, the Bible says Elisha and the sons of the prophet were, he didn't say they were hungry. When he saw the king coming, he said, this son of a murderer wants to now come and kill me. Oh, yeah, you push, you stop him. And because of that, it's okay now. It's called my attention. Let me casually do something about what is killing a nation. By this time, Kabakoto Sakataya. By this time, tomorrow. By this time, tomorrow. Listen, it didn't tell you how it will happen. If you understand the superiority of the realm of the spirit, you will never ask how results manifest. You see, let me tell you something. When people argue and say, how did this thing happen? They are not wise. 
the raw materials that create the earth are resident within the realm of the spirit he said by this time tomorrow by this time I'm hurrying up I would have given you scriptures but I really want us to pray that by this time tomorrow they call, they, please help them this will cause this and that and then a foolish man like many doubters that insult men of God he said what are you saying I, I mean I'm the minister of this and that I read this and that even if the windows hey, yeah. he knew that much that heaven had a window with what did they build the window he never asked if God will open the window will these things be and the prophet said to me you will see it all but they will kill you in front of that breakthrough. Then look at how the miracle happened. The prophecy had been programmed in the spirit. Now it is up to the word. This is where the wisdom of God starts. He starts searching for scenarios in the earth that can bring what is in the spirit to manifest. Are you seeing how prophecy comes to pass? Watch this. Look at this. Let me teach you something. Watch this. Look at me and learn. If I prophesy to you, Emeka, and say by tomorrow, if it is really by the Spirit, I say by tomorrow, money is coming to your account. I have placed that word in the Spirit. Hold on. The word manifests by the wisdom of the Spirit. Let me tell you what the wisdom of the Spirit is. It will start searching the earth to look for the scenario on earth that is capable of bringing that word down. Then connect it to the individual. Listen. The wisdom of God will move to a rich man. If it's not open, it will move to somebody who God had instructed to. So if it will keep moving like that, that's how the anointing got to Mary to be the mother of Jesus. The Bible never said the name of the mother of Jesus will be Mary. The prophecy started searching for a virgin. When it found one and she said, I'm available, it brought her out. Listen, there are too many activities on earth that can mirror what is happening in the heavens for God to be bankrupt in terms of manifestation. When God says, I want to bless you, God is already speaking to millions of people to sow. It's just that he has not told them who to sow. The wisdom of God can just connect one of them. You see how prophecy works. I'm helping your faith so that when God says I will do this you now sit with your limited mind and say I only know uncle A and B and I already know a promise you will never see me and God is saying no we are talking about the wisdom of the creator look at what happened four lepers everybody say four lepers four lepers were sitting quietly and the wisdom of God the spirit of wisdom because the word of God must come to pass the man of God had declared it and the, the anointing came on the lepers. They thought they were just tired but they didn't know that at that point they were under the influence of a man of God. And the word started programming that result. They say, why sit here till we die? Even that talk was by the spirit. They thought they were gisting. And they said, look, let's just get up and go to the camp of our enemies and tell them, kill us, but let's eat first. The Bible says the moment they began to go, God changed their people. They began to hear the sounds of chariots. And all of, listen, were they not warriors? Is it not fight they fought to get those things? Couldn't they fight again? When God wants to bless you, he will move your enemy in a way that you will not even know how things happen. I know I should not graduate but there is a mystery that can be programmed a man is watching your result 37 over 50 you need 50 something comes on him and he right and he does not even know listen listen people some people hear the testimony of some of our some of the people who wrote jam here that jam changes from 100 and something to two and you hear them talking nonsense talking stupid things and saying how can it happen and I said look, look at this foolishness how does a boil come out of your stomach where did the mass accumulate from that projected out did any part of your body reduce for it to come out didn't ask where it came from 
Then when it disappears, you say, where did it go to? You see how we think? Son of man, can these bones live again? Immediately, oh, not after 10 years, not gradually. Can these bones live again? He said, God, I've seen many miracles, but I've not seen this type. That a dry bone is not like a dead human being. I believe in raising the dead, but dry bones. And he said, okay, I want to show you something. That when I show up, I compress time and make things happen. And he said, prophesy. Prophesy. And things began to shift. Listen, it is too late when mysteries have been programmed in the spirit. Take it from me. The moment a man programs something in the spirit, you better find a way of countering it in the spirit. Otherwise, it must manifest. <laughs> this is what Habalists do. They conjure things. They conjure spirits. And then they tell the person, go, it is done. At the point they said, go, it is done. He didn't feel anything. Oh. Go. We shall be, we put your husband in a bottle and you saw it. Go, it is done. The woman will go home and still see her arrogant husband come back. And she'll be laughing. You're already in a bottle. Two days later, physical things start happening in the earth to force him to confirm to what has been programmed. After one week, the man becomes a toy to her because the realm of the spirit must so you look at a woman who is barren it may look like you just touched her stomach but it's more than that mysteries were programmed in the spirit he said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he says the power of the highest brothers and sisters I came to prophesy to someone it will be a quick walk oh. it will be a quick walk it will be a quick walk i tell you except it's not the god i told you that the remaining services don't miss them they will be help them please they will be strongly prophetic services strongly prophetic services it will be a quick walk there is a mystery that can push men force prophecy push men it is possible that in one day something can happen to you and you will turn and say god i'm sorry for doubting you when it was time for the animals to enter the ark of noah he didn't call one of them something was manipulated in the spirit all the animals started lining up regardless of their hostilities they lined up and came quietly listen let me tell you something the day i land the vanity of the physical realm compared to the spiritual realm i stop wasting my time about physical things Tr trust me i really mean it i saw how helpless the physical realm is that a body without a spirit is dead i stop wasting my time those who do business do it in the spirit realm they program things in the spirit realm and just watch like strangers how things manifest you program favor and you come and see strangers bringing blessings and people say how is it happening you see what is happening in this ministry submit to you it was programmed it's not a coincidence something took you from where you were and brought you here it's not just that you like a man no it's a mystery that is the same thing that will put a baby in the barren womb it's not when a man meets his wife that she gets pregnant to a man meets his wife to give the child physical form do you believe what I'm saying because let me tell you something one of the things we are going to do tonight is to change some things there are results that are wrong something programmed it it may be our ignorance it may be something i bring you a message of hope the realm of the spirit is still there that means there is still an ability to access it please sit down
I'm just trying to compose myself. My spirit is boiling this night. Listen, listen. I have experimented this thing too many times. Too many times. Too many times. You can program favor. You can program breakthrough. Listen, you can program judgment on the wicked. You can program speed. The word of God is an instrument of creation. You can create realities that were not there. When you hear people testify, it's not like the testimony was waiting somewhere. A word created it. When you are programming mysteries, you don't attach a face to it. The wisdom of God will create the actors of that mystery in the physical realm. You don't say, God bless me through my uncle. Uh -uh. I have accessed the principles that brings the blessing. It is God that will start sourcing for the men that will act the movie that will bring your breakthrough. He can use a donkey. He can use stone. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that let it come. Are we together? Yes. Ah, I tell you, believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you there are more angels on this ground than people sitting. There are more angels, angelic presence. I don't know if it's because of what I'm teaching tonight, but I prayed for strange intervention, angelic interventions, and the Lord is just opening my eyes, and I'm seeing that there are numerous angels battalions of angels every time god opens do you know why when i speak like these people start manifesting under the anointing because you see when you are open to the realm of the spirit portal is created immediately do you understand and when that portal is created there must be an effect remember when paul saul now saw jesus those there did not see but there was an effect from the realm of the spirit i'm explaining it because it's nothing strange but i stand and i see angels inside outside like this i'm even on that fence you are seeing i'm seeing all kinds of things happening and this is by the power of the spirit i believe that not all the angels are the same they are according to their ranking and their functions according to what kind of intervention must manifest because see our challenges are not the same i know some of you may not have issues but let me tell you there are people the issues you have require recovery restoration judgment on somebody so there are angels that are allocated for that kind of thing was it not an angel that used hailstone and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight please help them Jepreketo sadabala ko sambriata kata jegedeketo ko subriata jebres kata barota sabala ko leketa ko sabarote sabash enda kato kata bakata lekato sedeketi jiketo skibata karia mande katos i release angels strange ministry of intervention brakoto soto keta barata zegete kata by the authority of the Most High, angelic interventions over lives and families, it must end tonight. In the name of Jesus, it's the year of triumph. It must end tonight. Shkapatakatos, zeketekete, zekete, reketo koso pariata, epo shabababababa, mandakato sakata, Thou shall arise, thou shall arise, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Thou shall arise. God is arising over a family. God is arising over a family. Hallelujah.
Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You see, Ba, when you come before God's presence, the Bible tells us that upon Mount Zion, many things happen. The innumerable company of angels. These things are not fables. The Bible is not a book for religious people. It is life. It is true. It is our own belief that has made it look like a storybook. That you come to his presence and there is a strange intervention. I say it again in the name of Jesus. As I begin to teach, I've not finished. But in Jesus name, I release the ministry of angels. I release the ministry of angels. That whilst the teaching is going on, let intervention start. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange interventions. Strange interventions. Please sit down if you can. Please help those outside. Very quickly, I will give us four keys. Let's use ten minutes. Sorry, I will not be explaining it in depth. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I feel the spirit of prayer here. Scalabrodi there are four keys to provoking divine intervention. Every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently, do these four things and you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you. Listen, brothers and sisters, as you learn these mysteries, please use them. Don't be too big to use them. Be childlike and apply them. You will be surprised. These are not cunningly divine fables. These are things that I do myself. They are not necessarily things I'm just telling you just for, for, you know, just the sake of it. The first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer. Number one, please quickly, prayer. I'll give you two scriptures and then we'll, we'll be able to look at two. Write it down, please. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Talks about Peter. Don't, don't project it. I just want to hurry up. In Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, the Bible tells us how that James was caught by Herod. He was beheaded. And when it pleased the Jews, he now caught Peter and locked him. And then the Bible says the brethren began to pray. Whilst they began to pray, an angel came into the prison, brought Peter out. Peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then Peter was free. We see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used, was used to bring strange and divine intervention. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Please write this down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. It's a long reading. Don't project it. Just write it down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. This was... Um, a scenario where Paul casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy. And then the people got angry and they mobbed them. You know, and then the Bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer. Then the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. And the Bible says everyone in the prison heard them. All of a sudden there was an earthquake. And then the Bible says the chains broke and all doors open. I like that. All doors. It didn't say some doors. When the chain broke, all doors. The doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open. All doors open. Prayer can open doors. James chapter 5 verse 13. Maybe you can project that. He said, is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Prayer is the... Re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we leave to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important 
important to be filled with the Holy Ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues. It's not a phenomenon for Pentecostals. There is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command. Are we blessed? Is any among you afflicted? Has any of you received a bad report? Has any of you been told that you have so, so, so time to live? Has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see Christmas so when others are rejoicing, don't join them? The key is not to get up and cry. Has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again? No, sir. Has the door for close towards you? So the people who used to help you suddenly have changed. The people who used to like you suddenly have changed. The doors that used to bring you blessings have changed. Something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life. Prayer zero. Word life zero. You need an intervention. Prayer. The scripture I want us to read now is Psalms 18. Never forget this scripture. It's one of the arsenals that I have for my personal... Um, it's a scripture that has blessed me. I have prayed this scripture. If, if this scripture was a shook, by now I would have, maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Psalm 18. Don't ever forget that scripture. Don't ever forget it for as long as you live. If you are a leader going far, this is a chief tool that you need. We are going to read from verse 1 to 6. Then I'll pick for you the verses we are reading. It's a long verse. Ready? Please give it to us. One to six. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Listen. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord. I will do what? call upon the Lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised so by calling upon him shall I be saved from my enemies verse 4 the sorrows of death compass me this is a man in trouble and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid the sorrows of hell compass me about the snares of death prevented me in my distress hallelujah I didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me. I called upon the Lord and cried upon unto my God. He heard my voice from out of his temple. And my cry came before him. Even to where? Even to his ears. There is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty God. Let's jump to verse 14. Then to 17. Then 40 to 45. It's a quick reading. Verse 14. Yeah, he sent out his arrows. God has arrows. So, hey, look up. I learned this. I was checking arrows. You know, arrows that fly by day. And then I found out that it's not only the devil. God, the Bible says, yeah, this is him intervening for me. These are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release. He says he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. 17. Please give us 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. We are really reading to 48. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets. 43. Oh dear, media. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. And thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Pastor, you need this for your ministry. Oh. 
when you open a branch in a locality that you don't know there are people who need to command as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me the strangers shall submit themselves to me 45 verse 45 the strangers shall shake, fade away and be afraid out of their close places now 47 to 48 is a scripture i don't want you to ever forget ready go ahead give us well go to 47 go to 47 it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me who did it who did it he says it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me 48 he delivered me from my enemies yea thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man divine intervention as a man of god there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you as a leader there are wicked forces but when you catch this and catch the revelation you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and the lord will be with you mysteriously you will not travel and sit down and be shaking. Will a car jam me? Will it break my leg? Will it break my head? No, sir. Rest and quietness on the strength of scripture. Everybody say prayer. prayer. We need to learn how to call upon the Lord. Listen, do you know most people don't know how to call upon the Lord. They know how to lament. Hey, oh, you are not calling upon the Lord. You are shouting a lamentation, a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited. He said unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, let me not be ashamed, though. Let not my enemies triumph over me. There is a way you can pray with God sometimes like Anna you can't even shout it's not something you you just lie down and say oh God oh God deliver me from the shame of the wicked there are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled Lord confound their their counsel and God will say it got to my ear I had it I'm on my way coming prayer number two the second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding praise 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 as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith praise as an instrument of warfare but that you are blessing him in advance listen this revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of christ people are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders you know people don't know why the presence of god is still mighty in africa it's because africa is a praising continent yes yes sir yes sir they laugh at us and think that when we are dancing is nonsense praise is a mystery you want to turn around your situation no matter what you do if you have not praised there is no lord believe me lord give us understanding psalm 22 verse 3 it says thou art holy thou that inhabitest the praise of zion God makes the praise of men his habitation. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Joshua Selman. Listen, I've taught us how to praise. You don't praise God without dancing. That, that is nonsense. You are, you are singing a national anthem. It's when you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest. Moving your body is not a sign of, it's not, you are not, you have problems. You can cry but still praise. Are we together? It's, this is a, it's a powerful mystery I want you to learn. Our father bishop David Oedeko, when he almost had a few weeks ago, he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life. As soon as that happened, they declared praise. I said, oh dear. 
spiritual intelligence. Let me tell you what other people would have done. They would have organized a cocktail party and said, you know, we, and the devil, the devil would say, that's, I'm coming back. Praise. Praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil. Because you see, let me tell you, one of depression is the absence of laughter and joy. Satan uses when people are about to die. There are few people who die smiling. Most people are depressed, then they keep quiet. He says that the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. So when there is no joy, your spirit becomes broken, and the Bible says a broken spirit dry yet the bones. You don't praise God when things are going well. You praise God to make them go well. Listen, you don't praise God when, when things are going well and you praise God. It's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested. But before they manifested, it's called perfected praise. Praise with understanding. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as the Lord most high. Hold on. Listen. Let me tell you what Satan will tell you. The moment you sing that, he will tell you, is it not your sister that just died? Is it not five carryovers we are seeing? Or God, did they not just sack you? Ah. The gentleman that has been promising to marry you is he not by 8 a.m. this morning? He says he's not doing again. The devil brings it because he knows. You see, Satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh, the senses. Are we together now? So he brings things that resonate with your senses. When you see them, you are now depressed. But that's the time. Anytime you are praising God. Satan says, why are you praising him? Say, no reason. I'm praising him to create my testimony. You see that? Listen. Corporate dancing and praising is good. But you must learn to do this thing alone. If it means you trusting God to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise, it's worth it. Oh. It's worth it. Reserve the 40,000 for shoes and use it to pay for a small room. Put worship. Wake up in the night. Because there is personally me. I don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon. All kinds of calls distracting in the night. Oh dear. Oh dear. Ask God what I do in the night. Yes. Yes. Sometimes I carry koinonia documents. Drop it on the ground. Dance before it. And shame the devil. I carry my phone, put it there. I'm not dancing before them. I say, Lord, you are great. I dance before you. People are coming from everywhere. Rain or no rain. Publicity or no publicity. And God says, you are doing this for me. I say, Lord, who else will I do it for? And you are celebrating him. Lord, you are faithful. And you are worshipping him. You are sweating like a fool. And while you are doing that, God is dispatching angels. Okay? Make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account. That 100,000 I gave you, I didn't tell you who to send it to. Send it to him. Oh, his mother is at home. For giving birth to him, send an angel there too. And my innocent mother is lying down. She'll wake up in the morning and say, Mama, where are you? Say, who are you? Say, just come. Take my praise. This our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination. This pride that you don't have results and you are still talking, you know, ah, I, how can, okay, I agree that you can't, you think I can dance? Look at me. You think, no, 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 God, I don't have that gift of dancing. It's not a competition. This is your destiny. This is breakthrough. If a thief puts a gun and says you should dance, won't you do something? Some of us, when we were in the world, you know the kind of dance, demonic, satanic dance that you did for the devil for free, that destroyed you. You got drunk dancing it. A spirit entered you dancing it. 
I'm not saying you should dance all kinds of nonsense dance in the house of God, but I'm saying that there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone. Which, listen, listen, most people dance. You can turn your dancing time to a nightclub and God will look at you and say you are wasting your time. It is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable. Don't just move your body around just because you are happy. That, that's, that's entertainment. Brothers and sisters, there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes. But you are doing it with understanding. Don't think you will only always be laughing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. No job for you. No job for your wife. No job for your five children. They are all graduates. You have prayed, oh, nothing happened. Brothers and sisters, try singing and celebrating God. Everyone in their room rejoicing. Jesus, you are full and you are just dancing. Let me tell you what will happen. The Lord will start bringing testimonies. Remember when a cow would have killed you in 1995. And you say, Lord, I remember. Oh, and you start dancing it. You are, you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created. You would dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself. Brothers and sisters, you have programmed something in the spirit. You will get up in the morning and just dress and say, Father, thank you. And get a phone call. Who is this? I'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table. Who are you? So I finished for what did you read? Anyway, it's not what you read. Where are you? Come quickly. I like you. Ha! You just know that praise is working. Praise is working. Let the people praise me. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise me. It's an instruction. The earth has been programmed to deliver certain results, but let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. You can stop there. Zephaniah. It may be difficult for some of us to find, but just write. Media, please give it to us. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's read 14 to 20. I hope we can... Just quickly hurry up. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 14. We're reading to verse 20. Listen. It says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. It's not talking about a lady. It's talking about human beings. You must read the Bible prophetically. When it says daughter, find out what it means. There are times in the Bible all people are sons. There are times all people are daughters. Are we together? So don't think he's talking to ladies. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem. We're reading to verse 20. The Lord had taken away thy judgments and has cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. We're reading to verse 20. Give us 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Verse 19. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee and I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out. I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Hmm. At that time, I will bring you again even in the time that I will gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, say the Lord. You read that scripture and say, Lord, whether you understand it or not, I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something. I can see everything. 
Apostle, I don't have a house. Find a tree. Find somewhere. It is a place that will give you a house, my brother. I'm staying with neighbors. I don't want to disturb them. Find somewhere behind one rock. You don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood. Just engage in praise. Glorify God. You may be tired, but it's called a sacrifice of praise. Brothers and sisters, do this and see how things will turn in your life. There's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory. This gloominess that you see people tie their face around, it doesn't bring breakthrough. It adds to your sorrow. You loosen up and say, Father, you are faithful. You are tying your face around and people say, why, are you? why should I not tie my face? Or will you pay my rent for me? My brother, it's praise that will pay that rent. So you turn everything and rejoice. Let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this. <laughs> they say, don't mind all these men of God. They are turning you people to be stupid. You see that? But when you meet them for rent, they won't give you. If you want God's results, follow his methods. Number three, quickly. The third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith. Say after me, seed faith. Listen, I know that giving has been abused. Listen carefully, please. Outside, online, listen carefully. I know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Something I do all the time, including today. Every time you are in a situation, listen please. Every time you are in a situation that only God can step in with understanding, haven't prayed, package a seed, speak to that seed and give it an instruction. And sow that seed, release. If you just sow money, it's bribery. It's not the money. Revelation. The Bible is full of the potent power of seed faith. Connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke God's hand for intervention. I've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry. I've done it countless times on behalf of myself, my family, my friends, people I love. Seeds. The seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it. Please listen to me. Don't think I'm asking you to give me money. No. There are people who when they hear this, they just frown their face. Not at all. Not at all. God has been faithful to me. Are we together? Listen. There are people who have turned their lives around overnight. If there is one thing I know in my little walk with God, is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. I promise you. I have seen people quarter to shame. Everything was against them. It was obvious they are finished. And they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine. My life is full of sacrifices. Psalm 126, don't turn there. Verse 1 to 6, you write it. That when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. The first six verses, the, la the sixth verse ends by saying, they that sow in tears. The whole verses are connected. Verse 6 is connected to verse 1. God turning away the captivity of Zion like a dream. It says that they that sow in tears will reap 
in joy. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, the Bible says, shall doubtless return rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. It's not every seed. To be cheerful does not mean to laugh. To be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart. There are some times you will cry for the seed you sow. Hallelujah. Someone came over to my place today and the Lord instructed him to bring me a seed. And quite a very serious seed. Just, you know, a military officer just came, dropped the seed. And when I saw it, the seed was in dollars. I said, wow, in this recession, this seed. And the Lord told me, no, 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 no. Make sure you don't touch it. This is your seed for something. And the Lord told me, I started dancing. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is it. When God gives you seed to sow, it's intervention. Getting the seed to sow is an act of God's mercy. That you say, Lord, I must provoke this, but I have no seed. Then he gives seed to the sower. Those who know only know how to eat anything plus their destiny, they keep getting bread. But those who want to create a future. Brothers and sisters, I have created realities in my life with seeds. I believe in the power of a seed. Listen, don't let people, because of their cynicism, the imbalance when a man creates an imbalance in scripture you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused you bring it to context and teach people brothers and sisters a seed can change your life believe me i have done crazy things in my life i thank god that is only god that reveals that that is only god that knows the heart of men there are things if i tell you that i have done with seeds some of you you are not related to me but you will be angry you will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession seeds there was a year i've shared it again and again that god gave us an instruction we were just resuming koinonia and god gave an instruction he said so everything 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 i don't mean small so everything let it go i said thank you jesus you are ready to lift us that is revelation by faith abel offered you offer by faith you don't offer by by tricks and all kinds of no 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 and we release it brothers and sisters it didn't reach seven days seven days more than ten times that amount seeds i'm not saying you should give carelessly no but brothers and sisters the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years nobody is moving forward in your family you are just sitting down and god is saying look you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice one day you get angry and say lord i am tired of this anna did not have money to give but she said lord let's do it Give me the child. I've given the child already as a seed. And God said it's a done deal. There was a king in the Bible. Who they wanted to slaughter and defeat. It was very clear the nation of Israel would defeat them. And he carried his son, his future. And slew the child. The Bible says an indignation rose up to heaven. Battle ended. When God wanted to redeem man. It was an issue of urgency. God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed but brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are many ways to give. Money is not the only seed. It's just the seed that can easily be exchanged. That's why. There are times that people have made radical sacrifices. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Principles of divine intervention. Trace your life. 
at the moment where God gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes and watch what happened you just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going mm. I hardly share my testimonies I stopped because I found out that it annoys a lot of people and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary um, you know people once they hear preachers talk there are people who just get angry just like that it's nonsense brothers and sisters learn to sow seeds but the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions this is the mistake many of us have been making you package a seed some of you come and join the line apostle here is a seed i'm sowing i always ask people what is this for and the people say for nothing just i just feel like seeing you that's a donation that's a donation brothers and sisters all seeds are not the same there is a seed you give to the poor there is something it does to you there is a seed that you give to widows and orphans there is a kind of result there is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are if the word of god were a lie i would have died since because the risk i've taken with this word it would have killed me since but I believe him. I believe him. When I sowed that seed today, I was happy. The joy that filled my heart. I await the testimony that comes from it. Wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled through sowing is a waste of time. It's, imagine now, somebody who didn't go to the farm. He has a land somewhere. He just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and he goes to an empty place. You will find wheat there. But whoever sowed January, February down to April is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time. Brothers and sisters, I pray for us. May God kill greed from our life. Yes. This attachment to money, listen. This many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money. It's a lie. Wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it. Your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while. Maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said this five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, hey, this stupid boy, no. I respected that because that, that thing I knew would create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks. The guy sent me a text. And said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. Five naira. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Somebody was tired of where. How many jobless people have not sown anything. And they keep moving around with CV. What must tell you the devil is fighting you? You carry a seed and say, God, please. I'm married with three children. No job. This mockery must end. I drop this and I tie it to my job. And then praise around that seed. Praise around the seed. And your brothers and sisters say, so this is what they are teaching you. This is how these stupid men of God keep eating your money. And all of a sudden, the heaven opens. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. You are praying to buy land. Oh Lord, please give me two million naira to buy land. I now have 150,000. Just top it up for me. And God says, you mustn't buy it. Just learn. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, someone stands up and blesses you. I think it was you, Jimmy. I was showing you. Was it yesterday? I was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently. I said, God, what is this? What is this? For as long as you sow, whether you like it or not, 
the law is that you must reap. So if you have not sown anything, stop, stop saying, God, where is my harvest? And he said, what, what are you saying? A woman who does not take in, is she expecting a child? No, sir. No, sir. She do seasons of breakthrough in your life. Your seed is a weapon. Not just your prayer. Your seed is a weapon. Your seed is a weapon. One mama called me one time. I was led by God. Honestly, I felt so, I didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman and she was praying for divine financial intervention. I said, Mama, please, I want you to sow a seed. Not to me. I, I, I would never have the effrontery to tell that woman to sow into my life. I'm sure that woman will be older than my mother. I said, please try, connect with a seed. And the woman said, she doesn't have anything. I said, it's not true, Mama. There is something you have. What do you do? She said, she farms yam. I say carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said, which church is close around your area? She said, there's living faith. I said, go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying, singing any song in your language you know, while you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents the seed of a desperate believer. It's not whether you are more than 50% of the things people sow into my life, I don't need it. It's not for me. I recognize what it is. Is God speaking to someone? Seed faith. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. In 1 Kings 17, when our time is gone, just write it. We don't have to project it. 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 6. From verse 7 to 16. 1 Kings chapter 17, when you read from verse 7 to verse 16. The Bible talks there about Brook Cherith when it dried during the famine. And the Bible says that the Lord told Elijah to go to a place called Zarephath. And he said there was a widow there. God wanted to intervene in that widow's life. When the prophet got there, he said, give me water. She was running to go and bring water. And he said, please, and make some bread for me. And the woman said, I'm sorry, man of God. I respect you, but honestly, this is the last one I'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die. And the prophet said, no, no. When you give, it does not end. When you give, you extend the life of whatever it is. The prophet was teaching her. He said, make it for me first. In our generation, they say that's a heartless and wicked, devilish prophet. But the moment she did that, the Bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over. You can change your life. November, December is too short a time. No. November, December is too short a time, brothers and sisters. God can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine. Don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating New Year in your own house. Whereas right now you don't even have land. I'm talking to believers. Don't be surprised that you can give away up to 5, 10 million by December. Whereas what you have in your account now is not up to 10,000. Listen, I'm not talking nonsense. I'm not stupid. Don't be surprised. That after 10, 20 years that your wife has been buried, that she's going to celebrate New Year, two months pregnant. You do every calculation, you know it's not up to two months, but she's two months pregnant. Don't ask where the child came from. That right now, you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired, you have thrown it somewhere. But don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year. Is it not God we are talking about? Is it not the God of heaven we are talking about? Number four. The fourth key is the power of prophecy. The power of the prophetic. Weapons of supernatural intervention. The power of prophecy. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 8. 
We've already discussed it. Just write it down. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 8. The story of Elisha in Samaria. And the abundance that came to an entire land because there was a divine intervention by prophecy. Hosea chapter 12 from verse 13. Please give it to us. The Bible says, and by a prophet. Listen carefully. And by a prophet. It says, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. How did they come out of Egypt? By a prophet. Not by God. You would think God will say, oh, by me. Yes, it is by God. But the instrument that he used was a prophet. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Listen. There are challenges that people go through in life that is totally needless. If only they can locate a genuinely anointed prophet of God. You can come out of a situation overnight. Some battles are totally needless. They are products of pride and ignorance. Take note of these things I'm saying. Pride and ignorance. Some battles are totally needless. There is enough grace and anointing to bail people out of it. A gentleman had been writing, I think it was Wayek or Neko, I can't remember, for over maybe six, seven years. I remember one time he came and he was crying. I didn't allow him to finish. I said, that's all right. Let me pray for you. It is done. And he just went and the guy testified that truly speaking, he answered nonsense in the exam. Because his brain had, he had stretched the thing, he has passed the age that he should be concentrating to be reading for Wayek. And yet it came out, he had all credits like that. And he said, truly, this is my result. I say, of course, it's not your result. God gave you to help you move forward. Of course, it's not your result. When other people are celebrating their intelligence, you go to God and say, thank you, this one you gave me. There are things when other people are saying, I got, you turn to God and say, this one came from you. Prophetic intervention. Brothers and sisters, God still has anointed men. No? Yes. An anointed man is not a man who speaks well. An anointed man is not a man who throws people under the anointing. There are people who are privileged by the election of grace. That God has put ancient, ancient possibilities within them for the sake of the body. Your own price is to believe. They may not look like it, but they carry it. What you have, you have. It was given to you. Are we together? I truly believe that someone tonight, I told us the remaining services for this year will be very strongly prophetic services. And it will start from tonight. Just the five minutes or so we have to pray. And then I speak over your life. When prophecy comes, receive it. Receive it. You can reject it. But you can receive it. Do you know? I listen to every koinonia message. This message now that is being preached. It's not Joshua Selman. This is the man of God teaching. Joshua Selman will listen to the man of God later in the week. And when it's time to prophesy, I will lift my hands and receive and pray in tongues. Otherwise, I will keep blessing and the anointing that came from the throne through me. Through me. I must also receive it by faith. Prayer point number one. Father, I am tired of where I am. I am tired. You are a changer of people's lives. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I am tired of where I am, truly speaking. Lord, this year will not end like this. I've not yet seen any notable testimony in my life. And the year is about to end. Oh, God of heaven, arise, arise. Sheba sabalakata barakato shabradi alabata. Those online pray. Ela masena na malia na basia. Sheda na na baya na na basia na 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 bala na na basena na na. Lord, the favor you said I will walk in. I am yet to see it manifest, and it is November. 
the prosperity that you said I will walk in. Lord, I believed you. I still believe you. So We are desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Lift your voice and pray. We are desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are desperate people. Tired of the status quo. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things And we press in Gotta be more Say after me in the name of Jesus Shout it, say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare Over every mountain that stands between me and my result hear the word of the Lord be crushed into pieces lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus hear the word of the Lord I speak over every mountain mountain of witchcraft mountain of delay I crush you by the God of heaven. Le bros kata barakato shakata Embre kete kete Those outside pray Online pray I decree and declare Hear the word of the Lord Who are down mountain Before Joshua Selman I command you become play Shena masadea Shena masadi na mana na mali araba la bosa da da biara. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every promise hanging in the realm of the spirit, I prophesy by the mystery of divine intercession. You must manifest now. Lift your voice and pray. Find expression. I give you a body. My breakthrough. Find expression. My lifting. Find expression. My advancement. Find expression. I give you a body. Manifest in my life. Pray. Find expression. I've seen you in my dreams. I've seen you in my visions. I command you to manifest. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything I've lost. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Everything that should not have left me. But was taken away from me. I decree and declare. Return back to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Be serious. Pray. Every relationship that should not have left every finance that should not have left every favor every breakthrough i call you back every access 
every platform in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Please lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God, I push you to the next level of your life. I push you to the next level of your life. And hear me, I decree. I don't know what stands your way. I come tonight in the name of Jesus and I crush it into pieces. The same way the Red Sea was divided, I command every obstacle to be divided in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every physical scenario that must be created in the earth realm to force what is in the spirit to find expression, I schedule that event now in the name of Jesus. Hear me, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, what has tied you and limited you. That's how you thought breakthrough would come last year. It didn't come. I declare to you in these two months left, enter your rest. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. Lift your hands. I want to prophesy over your finances. There is, there is the power to prosper. Listen, there is a grace that helps men prosper. In the name of Jesus, believe me as I pray this prayer for you. By the grace of God who has shown me mercy and grace, I prophesy to you, beginning from this night, favor after favor, strange financial favor. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your destiny. I speak it to your life. In the name of Jesus. Any man sitting on your glory. Jacotos Katapatea. In the name of Jesus. I declare the earth opens up tonight and swallows them. The spirit that eats up blessings when it's almost coming to you. It comes to others when it's about your turn. Something cuts you off. This is not for everybody. But I'm prophesying to someone. If your eyes saw it in the spirit. I command your hands to hold it. If you saw it in your dream. I command your hand to hold it. If you saw it in your visions. I command your hand to hold it. hallelujah now listen i pray for everyone here who is a student that and you are not you have already celebrated graduation but the truth of the matter is that what is in the faculty will not graduate you i stand before my god whom i serve and i decree and declare strange intervention for you now listen if there is anyone here god told you that by december you should have a job until now no job has entered your hands in the name of jesus the son of the living god wherever your job is from the realm of the spirit i connect it to your life i connect it to your life and if there is anyone sitting there now i overturn i overturn until it gets to your turn. Listen. There are people God has instructed to bless you. But they have been disobedient. I take sleep on them tonight. 
they must obey God on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me I don't know what has not been working in your life I'm prophesying to you by the anointing I decree and declare they say master we have toiled all night some of you you have toiled from January you have submitted the same prayer request miracle service after miracle service it comes to an end now in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now by the anointing of the spirit give me one minute to speak over your family members I don't know what is plaguing your family members that God must step in if not you will still cry again I change that situation now please help them help them I change that situation now may the angel of the Lord's presence in the name of Jesus go to every home and begin to correct things now I command correction 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 If there is anyone here with a health challenge that has refused to go I don't care what it is I stretch my hands to you and I command that the power of God comes upon your body now and let that sickness go I terminate that infirmity whether it's a blood disease whether it's witchcraft barrenness whatever it is I terminate it now listen Please believe me whatever you have seen in your dreams and visions that you know it is of God I release my faith you I pull it to your destiny don't be foolish and say how will it happen no we're talking of the God of heaven The anointing for divine intervention. This is the anointing that will be functioning all through this week. I decree. Thank God to, it's Sunday. I'm sure that's why God made it Sunday. I prophesy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday until Friday. I command them days of divine intervention. Days of divine intervention. I speak it to the realm of the spirit. Angels of intervention moments of intervention the last prayer and we are done in the name of Jesus every mal man that your favor is tied to Shakotos Katabarakata between now and Friday I connect you to them all kinds of favor believe it I decree and declare if that man is alive on earth then between now and Friday, let there be a strange connection. Wave your hands to Jesus and tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We believe you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Everyone stand. Our time is gone. Please. I'm saying this sincerely from my heart. I don't want you to miss any of the services that are left. We have one more miracle service for the year, for this month. And the remaining, just have, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks. Please don't miss it. Because what the Lord showed me, we need to push ourselves to make sure this word comes to pass. Every week will be a miracle service. Every week, strange utterances coming to redirect and program our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to give an opportunity. Our time is gone. Thank you for your patience. There are people here. Please keep standing everyone inside and outside. There are people here. You heard me preach. And the first intervention you need is to surrender your entire life to Jesus Christ. Probably you came here for the first time. You came frustrated trusting God to give your life order and direction. And there might be people who had given their lives to Christ at one point but things just went haywire and you're saying man of God I want to be a product of God's mercy and grace please our time is gone wherever you are 
overflow one through if, if, if there's another overflow three or any other place those online you can connect and pray the prayer with me wherever you are please make your way to the front right now god bless you let's honor them as they come there are people coming the holy spirit is certainly talking to a few people make your way to the front god bless you thank you for your boldness god bless you sir god bless you ma god bless you please clear the way for those coming from outside don't be afraid don't be ashamed there are others standing here already so come quickly come quickly please if you came with someone and is coming out allow them to come don't interrupt them hallelujah don't interrupt them very quickly please hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out this is koinonia i want to lead you to jesus christ please lift your right hand thank you for coming say after me lord jesus i love you i believe that you are the son of god that you came and died and shed your blood for me i receive of your mercy i receive of your grace i hand my life totally to you tonight i ask you to help me i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from tonight I will never be the same. I move forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I decree and declare that you honor the decisions that these ones have made. This is the beginning of greatness in your lives. In the name of Jesus. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare the power of the devil broken over your life. You will begin to walk in victory from today. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, please, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you, you turn to the back. You see a gentleman waving his hands. Please, all of you, just follow him very quickly. And um, they will talk to you. Aside from those going out, please, if this is your first time worshiping with us, any of the overflows, those online, we love you, we honor you. Thank you for connecting with us. I'm sure the media... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.